everybody, it's Greybeard again. I'm back, uh, another little project. You see behind me here, I've got my Jeep Wrangler. It's a 95 YJ. And we've had some issues with it before I left Tucson. Uh, tried to get it up on the trailer and the uh, thing wouldn't start. And come to find out, the pack rats chewed up the wiring on top of the transmission. Finally found that once they got here and got that fixed. Uh, but what we got going on today is after replacing the fuel pump and everything, what I've got to do now is I need to replace these fuel lines. As you can see, they're very badly dry rotted. These are probably the original fuel lines. And then I've got to repair this opening that I made because time constraints, trying to leave Tucson under the circumstances, you know, just throwing things at it, trying to do a quick fix. I thought the uh, fuel pump was bad, put a new fuel pump in it, turns out it wasn't a fuel pump. So, time constraints forced me to cut an opening in here, which isn't a bad thing uh, if you plan on getting back in here. But what I'm going to do is we're going to drop the tank so I can replace these lines. And then I'm going to see about replacing this and getting it back up in here and uh, weld it back in place. And see if we can't make it look like new again because I really don't like the idea of having that the way it is. So that's the plan for today. Uh, I'm going to get this cleaned up a little bit. I'm going to start getting the uh, fuel out of the tank. And uh, once I do that, we'll see about dropping the tank and getting it down and getting those fuel lines replaced. And also get that hole welded up and see what we do to make it All right, everybody, uh, I got the tank dropped. I uh, saved you the agony of watching that happen. It's real simple on these Wranglers. Uh, if you look here, you've got three bolts here along the back actually four so there's four bolts here towards the front actually and then there's three on the back you drop those out you got six screws that go around the filler neck here you drop those out normally uh, you would disconnect your lines up underneath the vehicle here along with your electrical connector but since I had the hole open and the floor, I just went ahead and just took them loose here. It drops out, you can clean it up if you like at this point, but now the fun begins. So now, what I gotta do, here's the tank dropped out. I gotta get this cleaned up, so I can get this put back into place, get it welded up. Here you'll see the fuel lines hanging down. So I've got to get those pulled. Uh, still got the uh, original clamps on the other end. They are the uh, crimp clamps. Those are real pain in the butt to take off. So I'm gonna get those removed, get that line out, get the lines replaced, and uh, actually attach the lines to the top of the tank. Then once all that's ready to go and I've got this floor welded up, then we'll see about putting it all back together. Greybeard back day two on the Jeep project that is uh, changing the fuel lines on the fuel tank uh, things didn't turn out quite as I expected uh, we were going to fill or should I say replace the cutout panel into this and I don't know if it's because there's just entirely too much bed liner on this all I'm really doing is setting a fire so uh, I couldn't get it cleaned up all that well the stuff's really stuck so I don't know, we might have to end up getting a torch in here and burning that off. There's a grinder and it's not doing any good. Wire wheel's not doing any good. So I might have to get that cleared out. What I may end up doing 
is just replace this whole pan back here. Uh, it's not too bad, a little over $100 for a replacement pan. That might be the best way to go. Or I might just fabricate a hatch to go here. That way I can access the fuel pump and the lines as necessary in the future. Another issue we run into, let me see if I can get up under here so we can see what's going on. <clears throat> there we go. Right here is the problem. This is your body mount. As you can see, there's the back tire. Here's the back of the back bumper. These fuel lines come from the top of the tank right here, underneath or between the body and this cross member. Well, this body mount on the top end has collapsed. So at some point, I'm gonna have to pull the body completely off of here and replace all the mounts. But in the meantime, I'm gonna see if I can't just put it back the way it was with the new lines and hopefully it's not gonna pinch them off. Uh, it's pretty crazy, but that was the deal. So, uh, sorry I didn't get a lot of this on film, but I got up in here, removed that bolt off the body mount, jacked the body up about three quarters of an inch so I can get the old lines out and get the new ones back in. So right now, this is where I'm at. I've got the lines reconnected over here on this side. New clamps. That's both the return and the feed line. So now I have here this is the vacuum line for the emissions return for the vapor collection and I've got my feed line and my return line so now what I'm going to do that I've got that cut back out up here is I've got to get the tank back up in here which is kind of interesting it's about 27 years old now and uh, it's swollen a little bit so it's making contact here on this side of the frame as it's going up and also over here on the exhaust pipe as it's going up there so I've got to literally force that up in there and then uh, once I get that back up in place we can see about running these fuel lines so what I'm going to do here is we're going to stick these lines up through the hole because I'll be able to connect them once I get the line up or the tank up in place so we're going to put the lines up here in the hole, and I don't have to reach up and pull them in. That's no big deal. I'll pull them up there and secure them. So once I get that tank up in place, and I get to get that connector for the fuel pump in place, and then we can get everything buttoned back up and take this bad boy for a ride. So wish me luck. Let's see what we can do for this one. All right, everybody, this is day three of uh, doing the fuel lines on the uh, Wrangler. Uh, sorry, this hasn't been much of a good project this time around. This thing's giving me nothing but fits. I uh, got everything back together and realized that my fuel lines are being pinched off where they pass through the frame. So I end up having to drop the tank again. No sense in doing that all over again, rerouting the lines, and finally got everything clear. So in result, this is what we've got with our new lines. Everything routed where it needs to be. Every tight, everything tidied way up underneath. Tank back in place. And on top of that, she runs again. So, I don't know where to go from here. Uh, we've got a lot of things that we need to do on this. You can see there's bed liner here. This is old. This is done by the previous owner. It's been well weathered. Over the last 10 years that I've had this Jeep, now this desert sun just tears it up. Got a lot of rust on my center console here. My seats need to be replaced. These are, I hate to say it, these are the Smitty Built XRCs. If you're a large guy like myself, 6 foot, 200 pounds plus, these aren't the seats for you. These things have steel frame and the bolsters here. And they just kill your hips. Uh, I honestly wish I never got these. On top of that, they don't weather well. This is kind of like a semi-velour tweed type material here. It does not handle the weather well. As you can see that side from getting in and out and from the sun. Believe it or not, these were silver. And they are a really nasty light gray now because the sun just bleached the hell out of them. Same thing with my harnesses. You can see here, the sun has gotten to them. These were bright green. So these need to be replaced. Something fierce. They have been weathered badly. You can see some of the difference in color there. 
they did not do well. So we're going to see about doing some more work on this old girl, getting them squared away. Luckily everything works. There's no body damage anywhere, no rust other than a little bit of surface rust here and there, no panels are rusted through. The only other sad thing is these tires look almost new. They pretty much are. They probably got 10, maybe 15,000 miles on them, but they're dry rot. That's the problem with them. Matter of fact, there's a good example right there. They're dry rot and coming apart. So that is not good. Eventually, I'm going to have to put tires on this thing. And the only piece of equipment is missing is a winch. So eventually, that's going to be something else we're going to add. And now that I'm no longer in the desert, I might end up doing a paint job, <clears throat> do some more forest type camo to meet, match the terrain. Right now, this time of year, as you can see, it matches in great. <laughs> it's a little bit of green, a lot of brown. So my neighbor's like, oh no, leave it as it. It'd be great for deer season. Well, I like it for all year round use. So who knows? Might integrate a little bit of green in there. And uh, kind of do a mix mash, you know, like a uh, all weather terrain type. I don't know what to do at this point. So here's another good example of what I mean about dry rotting. This is a brand new Goodyear Wrangler. Has never been on the ground. Still has all the little titties on the tread. But sitting here on the back of this Jeep in that sun, then about a year or two time it dry rot. So it's kind of sad to see what happens out there in the southwest desert. It is brutal. So that's a brand new tire. It's never been on the road. So that's what we're looking at. All right, I'm probably even going to consider rebuilding this rack. It was just something I kind of threw together with some scrap material I had several years ago and a cheap Harbor Freight welder. So maybe now we'll redo this rack beef up the roll cage some. It's still just factory roll cage other than the uh, crossbar I put in for my harnesses. So we're going to end up doing this. May just do a complete cage or even an exoskeleton. So bear with me. I apologize. This one hasn't turned out to be too much of a project, but we'll have more coming in the future. And uh, in the near future, I got something lined up that you're going to like that I'm going to do with my big Dodge. So that one's coming. Just got to wait for shipping and hopefully before the end of the year it'll get here. Thank you for coming, joining me on this little adventure. Hopefully the next one will be a lot better for you. Please like this video, drop me a comment, and subscribe. Thank you. It's Graybeard. Until next time.